Larry, it's the newest facility in the NFL, and it is a beauty as we come to you from U.S. Bank Stadium here in Minneapolis. Tonight, we've got a good NFC matchup in store between the Green Bay Packers and the Minnesota Vikings. And with a new rule, that decision to bring it out will cost him about five yards as he only gets to the 20. The Green Bay offense now about ready to take possession here. carry now this is Lacey and he'll find some space up to about the 25 it's a pickup of four and it'll bring up second down partner the one concern I had about Eddie Lacey coming out of Alabama was weight and it became a concern for Green Bay in 2015 yeah he was up over 260 pounds disappointing 2015 looks a lot better doesn't it a lot better and when he's lean oh boy is he a heck of a runner Rodgers to throw on second down it gets it over the middle to come. And he's able to get out to the 32 brought down there. Well, if you do read man coverage, Brandon, the drag route's a pretty good one to run against it because you're running away from people on it. So the offense has it first and 10. Now Rodgers will handle Lacey. And he went backwards. He'll be down at the 30. It's a loss of two there, bringing up second down. And the offense there, the O-line, everybody really on offense, they were just manhandled at the point of attack. Yeah, you could pretty much call them all out, couldn't you? And <laughs> Almost by name, right? That was a very tough sequence for the offensive line. But how about that defensive front creating a new line of scrimmage and creating a large yardage possibility? Now Rodgers throwing on second down toward the sideline and look at that catch dragging the toes and that's going to be a first down well done if you run an out route it's likely you end up near the sideline and what did we just see there the toe tap you got it the benefits of practice toe tapping foot dragging picking it up and making sure it was a catch they go play action here on first down and it's hauled in by Jared Cook. And he'll be brought down at the 48-yard line. Now this Vikings D, no doubt a huge boost in the week one win. They scored twice. They really helped lift what was, you know, at times a struggling offense. And you'll never get the head coach Mike Zimmer to admit this. But I'll guarantee you when he got home after this, when he had a big smile on his face because Zim's a defensive guy first. And to see Eric Kendricks with the touchdown on the interception return and Daniil Hunter with a fumble return for a touchdown, that's got to be very satisfying for Mike Zimmer knowing that his defense is playing at a high level early in the season. Nice catch by the tight end Richard Rodgers, and, you know, it came from the quarterback Aaron Rodgers. Some things just write themselves, don't they? That's exactly right. Both spelled R-O-D-G-E-R-S for those wondering. There you go. First down carry, it's Lacey. Call it a gain of four on first, and that'll make it second down. Not a run that you're gonna write home about, but still a good first down run. And that's what an offense calls staying on schedule. Three to four yards on first down, you're set up very well for the rest of the drive. Offense walks to the line for play number seven of the drive. They'll run here. This is James Starks. And he is met at the line of scrimmage, and he goes down right there. Just a gain of a yard there, and now it'll be third down. Well, I think we know by now that every run is not going to be broken and get all the way to the end zone. But these short ones still have their value. You can still set up your play action and throw the football. You control the clock because you have the ball and they don't. And often the physicality sets the tempo for the game. A play fake to Starks. Now Rodgers. Oh, 
He's got Adams on the hookup. And he's taken down, but not before reaching the 10-yard line. And how about this first drive? They're being aggressive, slinging it around. Really confident, too, because they're not trying to fool them with running plays, throwing it, and they're being very successful right now. And this will probably be the last play of the quarter. With Charles Davis, I'm Brandon Gordon. Second quarter about to get underway with the Packers in possession of the football. And they've got it here with a first down. They'll try to pound it in with Lacey. And running room hard to come by here. He gets it down to the eight. It's a gain of a yard, and it'll set up second and goal. Well, it's been the air game that's taken them down on this drive before they finally turned around and handed it off on the last play. And now they're looking for the big boys to get him in the end zone. Couldn't do it there. It'll be interesting to see. Offensive lines had to pass block a lot on this drive. Will they be able to revert and fire out and create some space in the run game? On second down, here's Rodgers. That's caught at the three. And he's going to take it in. Touchdown, Packers. Richard Rodgers from eight yards out. And the Packers take it right down the field and score on the opening drive. On is Mason Crosby for the point after. And it's good to make it 7-0 Packers. After the touchdown, here's Crosby to kick it away. Fielded about a yard deep. And the decision to bring it out, a good one, as he's up a yard or two shy of the 30. Now the Vikings offense gets set to take over here. the drive with Peterson. What a spin. And he'll push his way forward to about the 32. And Peterson hoping to bounce back from a struggle in week one. 19 carries, just 31 yards. That's only 1.6 yards per carry. Very un-Adrian Peterson-like. You sure those weren't typos? <laughs> those numbers like you're it. reading? Because that's not normal. But in 2015, week one was a struggle for him as well. And we know how the season ended up, led the NFL in rushing. So eventually they'll figure that out, but give a lot of credit to the Minnesota defense. They couldn't run the ball on offense, but the defense, they took it away and scored. That bailed them out. Looking back to week one for a second partner, a lot of intriguing football. A couple of games that really caught our attention. The Seahawks needing a late touchdown to beat the Dolphins. How about the Chiefs coming back from down 24 to three to beat the Chargers? Two terrific games, and you don't forget Oakland and New Orleans not even getting to overtime because of Jack Del Rio's gutsy two-point conversion call in regulation to seal the victory for the Raiders. And I love what the Lions did. Big lead, let it get away against Indianapolis, and then came back and beat them late. Yeah, 39-35, that was a shootout. Call it a gain of three, and that's going to lead to a third and 12. I know it was a gain, but you have to sense probably a little bit of disappointment there because when it's out there in open space, I think they expect to get more out of a play, don't you? Especially when you're getting it to your guy out of the backfield. You're expecting him to be able to create something, be a little more shifty. Yeah, no doubt about it. Good open field tackling. Held it to an okay game. And here's the first NFL catch from Laquan Treadwell. A very solid gain of 27. Well, the advantage has certainly shifted to the defense as we began that third down play, and they found a way to foil it and pick up a first down. Third time's a charm, right? Two incompletions. Had to have it on third, and they got it. Yeah, they stuck with it, weren't daunted at all, and picked it up. Here we go now. Green, 90. Green, 90. First down, here's a run with Peterson. 
And able to break one tackle, but then quickly brought down. A gain of three, second down. The ball carrier there, Adrian Peterson, he turned 31 back in March. But after his return from knee surgery a few years ago, that incredible return, I don't think we look at his number the same way as we do a lot of running backs who turn 30. Yeah, I agree. And right now, standing 17th all time in the NFL rushing ranks. To throw, Bradford. And a quick throw here. That's complete. It's an eight-yard pickup and leads to a new set of downs. seven on the play and it'll be a second down everyone's got to be able to catch the football doesn't matter what position you play but if you're on offense be aware a ball may come your way so they complete the pass and now they face a second down now a second down throw for bradford over the middle it's incomplete. Out of the backfield, Adrian Peterson was the intended target. And that'll lead here to a third down. And there's a good opportunity to just went awry there. A drop pass. I guess that's why they call them running backs and not catching backs. Seventh play of the drive now as they come up on a third and three. And it looks like we've got a dime set here defensively. Six DBs in the game. Third and short yardage. Bradford. This is Johnson. He's got it. It goes as a gain of eight and it moves the chains. And they're on third and short. They just tried to spread the field. It worked. And I think that the spreading of the field, the extra receivers, has really become the next in the evolutionary chain in the NFL. Go all the way back in that situation, you're handed to the fullback, right? As we evolve, maybe you pitched it to your tailback. Now you spread the field, and you have your choices of where to throw it and complete it for a first down toward the center of the field, but it's incomplete. He was looking for Adam Thielen there, and that'll make it second and 10. So incomplete on first, let's see what second down has in store. So we've got encroachment, and that's a free five yards. Too easy for the offense. A bit of impatience by the defense on that one. And the offense readies for play number 10 of this series. To the air again with Bradford. He's going to flip one out here to his running back. And he'll get into the end zone. Touchdown, Minnesota. Adrian Peterson, a nine-yard touchdown grab. And the Vikings are an extra point away from tying this thing up. Blair Walsh on to attempt the extra point. It's good, and we're all tied at seven apiece.
So we're right back where we started. All even as the kick's away. This is fielded at the goal line. And a nice return sets him up pretty good here at the 30-yard line. And Green Bay getting ready to go as they take the field. And they were able to punch it in the end zone last time. They'll be looking to do that again here for the defense. Obviously, they'll be looking to stop them from punching it back in the end zone. It always is punch-counterpunch, isn't it? And which team has the advantage? Well, let's just go back. Last time on offense, they rolled downfield, got into a good rhythm. You can see a little more bounce in and out of the huddle. You can see the sideline really get into the game. So defensively, you're thinking to yourself, how do we take that away from them? How do we get the advantage back? Let's see what they come up with. I think... Now, whistles come in. We're going to get a timeout here by the offense. It's just their first, so they'll have two remaining here before we get to halftime. And Green Bay getting ready to go as they take the field. And that recipe on their last drive that resulted in a touchdown looked pretty good, so they'll be hoping to do that once more. And it takes me back to when we sat with the offensive coordinator and the head coach. They felt pretty good about their game plan and thought there were some holes in the defense, and they exploited them the last time out. Let's see if they can come back and put together a similar drive. And we'll see if they can do just that. Completed pass play. Now let's see if they go back to the air or to the ground. Now Rodgers throwing on second down. And he's just going to get rid of this thing. To no one here, he throws it away, and now it's third. Not too many things get to a quarterback of this magnitude, but I think it's safe to say that pressure can get to any quarterback. Now he's obviously a great franchise quarterback, but felt the pressure, threw it incomplete. So incomplete on second down. Now they'll look to convert here on third. Throwing his Rodgers on third down. And incomplete. He had nowhere to throw, so he just tossed it away. But that brings up fourth. Let's face it. You can run the route tree as many times as you want, get in sync, practice it, do all those things. But once you get to game speed, it doesn't always time up quite that well. That one goes incomplete. Now the second-year man from Buffalo, Jake Shum, on to punt. Marcus Sherrill's back deep for Minnesota. And that'll hit at the five and go into the end zone for a touchback. And the Vikings now heading on to the field. And the ball backed way up. So thinking with this amount of time on the clock, probably just sit on it and we'll see these two teams go to the lockers. Yeah, I don't think you want to overthink it in this situation. Either side of the ball. Just go ahead and finish up the half and get on out and talk about it. Here's Peterson as they begin on the ground. And he finds some space past the 25 to the 27. It's a seven-yard carry to set them up with a second and three. First play of the drive. Let's give credit all around. Excellent blocking, but a guy carrying the ball. He was the finisher. A really nice run. So a touchdown apiece. That's what we have to show at halftime as they head to the locker room. 7-7 seven, seven our score. As we send you down to our EA Sports Studios in Orlando where we find our man Larry Ridley with our halftime report. This fielded a few yards into the end zone. And no run back here. This will be a touchback and it comes out to the 25-yard line. They come out here in the eye. The third quarter starts with a run by Peterson. And nothing doing. He's immediately taken down at the line of scrimmage. No gain on the play there. Second down. So nothing there, but maybe you blame that on the blocking. Yeah, at some point, you've got to win at the point of attack. And on that play, that was all the defense. They made it happen. So second and 10 here. Now Bradford on second down. Throwing for his running back, and he's got him complete. And he's brought down. They give him 14 yards that time and a fresh shut of downs. I know most of the time when the ball's in the air, you're thinking wide receiver, tight end. But running backs, they can be a big part of any passing offense nowadays. Fresh set of downs here. First down, Bradford. Looking middle 
and it's incomplete. Charles, let me get your thoughts on the AFC West in general. After week one, you know, you'd be Chargers losing that tough one, but they put up a good showing. Broncos and Raiders both winning one-point games. What do you see from the AFC West? For me, partner, nothing has changed from what I thought going into the season. In fact, it's actually solidified what I thought, that the AFC West is going to be one of the better divisions in football. Kansas City still riding that winning streak in the regular season from last year. They extended it in week one of this year. Oakland, everyone talks about being a surprise. They're no longer a surprise. They're a solid team that will contend. And Denver's just the defending champions in the league. And San Diego played much better than expected in week one. Now the offense lining up first and ten. For now to throw on first down. Caught on the right side by Treadwell. And he takes it down deep into Green Bay territory. That one goes for 34 yards. And it'll be first down Vikings. Now that play will end up on the highlights and you'll see it all over the place. But what you won't see, the offensive line that bought the extra time that allowed for the big completion downfield. Those guys made that play possible. They give it to Peterson. <laughs> and he's brought down. It's a good gain of 11. Sets him up first and goal. And that's a good sign right there as we start the third quarter. Because in the first half, not much space to run the football. And as we go into the half, we often think to ourselves, all right, what's the adjustment? What do they have to do? You know what a lot of the adjustments are? No adjustments. You know the game plan. Been working on it all week. Maybe a little tweak here or there, a little bit better blocking, and now you're establishing the running game. This will be caught at about the five, and he's able to get it down to the two-yard line. Four yards on the pickup, and it'll be second and goal. In recent years, the slot receivers really gained stature in the NFL because they could do so many things. Yes, they can line up wide like your normal wide receiver, but to have that kind of courage and toughness to run routes in the middle of the field and become dependable targets for their quarterbacks and move the sticks, those guys are worth their weight in gold. They'll try to run with McKinnon, and he is going to lose yardage here. He lost two there, and it's third down. When you think of Mike Daniels, you think of strength. Hard to knock off the football, but surprising quickness and ability to move and evade people. How about that play there? Well, he can squat 600 pounds, so that's how he caught people's attention coming into the league, and he caught our attention right there. Third and goal, Bradford. It's caught in the end zone. Touchdown, Minnesota. Jarek McKinnon from four yards out. And the Vikings are able to strike for six. So on third and medium, they dial up the pass, and it works to hit the end zone. And it's really not a surprise to me. That's a throwing down in the NFL because of how tough it is to run the football. But what offenses like to do is still show run formations to make them respect it and throw out of those. In this case, they took a nice shot at the end zone and made it pay off. And so we have the touchdown now. Here's Blair Walsh to kick this one away. This is fielded a couple yards deep. And he's able to get it across the 20, but not by much, as he's marked down at the 21-yard line. A look at the offense now here, coming back out on the road for their first possession of the second half. They're down in this game. A chance for the offense, though, to put something on the board, get some momentum here at half two try and get things kick-started for them. And you know at the half, they discussed how they were going to get that done. This is where scripting comes into play a lot how, of the time. How many plays do you script coming out of this? Most, most of the time in the first half, you're scripting 12 to 16. I think in the second half, you're really scripting more like 8 to 10, kind of a starter or an opener, whatever, they, whatever terminology they use, just something to get you off to a quick start. And he is down deep into Minnesota territory. A big play there on the catch and run. 69 yards. Well, as long as you're not a defender, it sure is good to see Jordy Nelson back and doing what he does really, really well. Catch him short, 
turn them into long gains. Yeah, that injury in 2015, and always a sigh of relief when these guys get back and they're productive. People have always underestimated his ability to run and make big plays. They always think he's slower than what he is until they get burned. On first and 10, here's Rodgers. He's got time in the pocket. Touchdown, Packers! Devontae Adams from 10 yards out. And the Packers are within an extra point of tying this thing up. All right, partner, let's go to cliche time. We're all back to even after that score tied the game. And now a critical extra point attempt here. And an important one that is as we are tied now early in this fourth quarter. Set to go now with the kickoff. These two teams all even again as we continue in this wild fourth quarter. On the return, here's the dangerous Cordero Patterson. And he'll take it past the 25 and up to the 28-yard line. And now out comes Minnesota. And that last drive, a long drive, but not just that. They had a great air attack going. Do they stick with that? I would think that they would because if they were confident enough to do it on the last drive, starting backed up in their own territory, why would you change anything? They've got to be confident about what they're presenting and continue to do so. Yeah, because the secondary, they really looked clueless. And that was amazing because that drive went and went. No adjustments and no big plays by the defense to knock the ball away. And complete right side, the tight end Rudolph. 18 yards on the pick up there. And it'll be a Minnesota first down. So much goes into a successful play, doesn't it? How about that play action there? Freezing the defense just enough to bring the tight end free downfield for the completion. gain here as he's up to about the 47 yard line. Give him a couple on the carry there. Second and eight. That's a good play by the guys on the defensive side of the ball. Held him to a gain of two and that changes the playbook a little bit now for the guy calling plays. Second and eight. Now he's got to probably think about going to the air instead of maybe staying with the ground game. Second down. Bradford. Completing it to the right side, Johnson. They pick up 12 on the play there, and they move the chains. So here we go, first and 10 now. Peterson alone in the backfield. And they'll give it to him here. Stays on his feet. And he'll do a nice job here just to fight his way back to the line of scrimmage. No gain on the play. It'll be second down. Well, at least he was able to break that initial contact or it could have been a loss. Yeah, give credit to the defensive player, though. What did he do? Made him slow down, slow up his feet, and allowed the rest of the guys to get there to finish him off. They run again with Peterson. And they went the wrong way there. Losing yardage back at the 43-yard line. It's a loss of two, now third down. Well, on that play, the expression, don't blink, you might miss something, certainly applied. That was fast. Defense diagnosed the play, and it was over in a heartbeat. Hitting the home stretch here in a great game, a tie game. Let's see if the defense can get the stop they need to get the ball back. On third down, Bradford. And there's a flat pressure from his right, and he goes down hard, flat on his back. And we say it all the time, have to be able to get rid of the ball sooner than that. You have to help your offensive line out. They're going to protect you as best they can. And if you're getting three to five seconds to throw the ball, they're doing a really nice job. But when you hold it and give up a sack, you're really almost discrediting their work. Here's Jeff Locke now, as he should be able to pin him back deep here with his first punt.
This one angles out of bounds in a good spot in the coffin corner. And they're going to mark this out of the five-yard line. And Green Bay getting ready to go as they take the field. And they will simply, Charles, be looking to duplicate what they did last drive when they were able to push it in for six. And they hope it'll be that easy, right, to be able to take exactly what happened before, replicate it. They may have to make a few additional changes along the way because I'm sure the defense will make some adjustments. But they've got to have great confidence having scored the last time out. And he's going to take this up past the 10 to about the 11. It's a six-yard pickup, and it gets him to second and four. So the offense readies for a second and four. to throw on second down. And Cook has it, left side. And out of bounds across the 15-yard line. Five yards is the pickup there as that extends this drive. And there's a completion to the tight end. And look at the size of these players nowadays. At that spot, 6'4", six, 6'5", six, and up. A lot of guys used to be basketball players, somehow came back to football. That's really good for the game of football. You get better athleticism, great hand-eye coordination. Guys who know how to control their bodies when they run their routes. He's got time. And brought in by the tight end, Cook. And they'll bring him down here up at about the 22-yard line. Six yards on the pickup, and that'll make this a second down. And they're going to speed things up here. Rodgers to throw. And his throw is going to be incomplete. It's always tough for the guys throwing the football when they think they've got a completion and the ball's almost there, and then someone sneaks a hand or two in and bats it away. So a second down in completion now brings up third down. It's a five receiver set. Three to the left, two to the right. To throw is Rodgers. And he finds Cook. And he's going to get to the 31, enough for the first down. Eight yards on the pick up there, and it moves the sticks. And they're going to hurry back to the line now. Now Rodgers. Surveying the field. Caught left side by Cobb. And he's able to take this one up to the 35-yard line. It'll be a gain of four, and it'll make it second down. Well, we looked at each other right when he flinched. We knew that that flag was coming. Yeah, offsides, easy call. Mark off the five and keep it moving. Now hold everything here. We're going to get a timeout by the offense. It's just their first. They've got two more to use here in the final stages. So just about a minute to go here, tie ball game. As fans, we love free football, but the guys in the field don't. They're going to attack and go for the win right now. Back to throw, Rodgers. Out to the flat for Lacey. And he's able to get this one down to the 40-yard line. They give him 13 yards there on the play and a fresh set of downs. They go play action here on first down, finding time. And he'll toss this one incomplete. Seeing no options, he throws it away. It's a tried and true formula, and I don't think it'll change for as long as we play football. If someone's trying to throw the ball and you can put pressure on them and make it tough, that's only going to help your defense. Yeah, he's since being hurried. He got rid of it before taking the hit, but incomplete. Hey, 
second down, Lacey. And a short gain there down to the 37-yard line. Call it about a gain of three, and they'll be looking at a third and seven coming up. We always like to talk about defense in terms of levels. First level defensive line, second level linebackers, third level defensive backs. On that run, that was what we call a first level run, and it was stopped by a second level player. And the Vikings with an extra defender in the secondary on third. Playing coverage here. This is Starks. Call it no gain there, and it leads to a fourth down. Nice job there defensively to clamp down because, really, they've been on their heels this drive. Agreed, and they really needed that. Now, whistles come in. We're going to get a timeout here by the offense. That'll be their third and final stoppage here as we step aside. So the game here. And now the Vikings are going to stop it here on defense with a timeout. And as the two teams talk it over on their respective sidelines, we take a break. So the game here hangs on the right foot of Mason Crosby. This will be from 53 for the win. And I don't think this has the carry. It does not. It's no good. And that changes everything here in OT. And here in overtime, if the team that receives the ball scores a touchdown, it's over. If they don't, we can still have some more football. That's exactly right. If they go down and kick a field goal, the other team gets a possession to either match it or score a touchdown to win the ball game. If both teams kick field goals, the next team to score wins. But if the receiving team throws a pick six or fumbles the ball and it gets picked up by the defense and they score, the game is over at that point. And last year, that would have been a net gain of five on the return. This year, he stopped where he would have been if he had taken a knee, and that's at the 25. The Vikings offense now heading out to take over. They control their own destiny here. They have the football in overtime. Obviously, a touchdown would win it. And I think teams around the league are still adjusting to the idea of going downfield, scoring a touchdown, wins the game, because they were used to just going downfield and trying to get in field goal range to win a game. Still having to make that transition. Let's face it now, the ones who are doing it best know they need to go down, attack, put the ball in the end zone, and not leave it up to a field goal and give the other team a chance. Yeah, as we said, they control their own destiny now. I thought guys that were over 30 weren't supposed to run the football this well in the National Football League. How about that veteran leadership? A big-time run combined with some nice blocking by his offensive line. Showing that the ins and outs of being a veteran still has his place in this league. His odometer is not totally turned over yet. Out to the flat. That's complete to his running back. Huge play there in overtime and even 60 yards. So what's the old expression that quarterbacks like to use when they decide to throw the football? I'm looking for either a touchdown or a check down. And he took the check down on that play and it worked almost to perfection. Red zone opportunity. Here we go. Green, 90. Green. Now Bradford. And he just throws this one away. Smart decision here, this close to the end zone, and it brings up second down. I hope I don't sound too rah-rah on that one, but that's the exact right throw. Either your receiver gets it or no one gets it. Give him a lot of credit for being really precise with it. Got rid of it, no one got it. They'll run it now, out of the gun. Penalty marker is down here. When you get that close to the goal line, you can't give up yardage that easily. You might have just given up a great opportunity to score six points. Right. 
Looks like the defense in press coverage here. Second and goal. Defense digging in again here. Now it's AP, Adrian Peterson. And he showed a nice little juke, but then the window quickly closed. Partner, I know we're in a goal-to-go situation, but my goodness, think about running the ball here. Not even a thought, is yeah, it? Defensively, they're in a prime spot. And I think the defensive guys are probably expressing themselves to them as well. I wouldn't run it here, guys. You might want to try throwing it. Yeah, it looks like they might be expecting a pass, an extra DB in on third and goal. And that's how the game has changed. Now we think pass first, even in goal line situations. He loses four, and it brings up four. I love the intelligence the defense just showed there. Read their keys, saw the screen developing, ran to it and smothered it. What a third down stop by them. So a big spot forthcoming for the kicker, Blair Walsh. And Walsh able to convert it as his kick is good. And they take a 17-14 lead. All right, so they're able to put three on the board here on the opening drive of OT, and now it'll be up to their defense to try and see this one out. So remember now, a field goal on this next drive would get us to sudden death. Any kind of turnover or turnover on downs would end the game, as would any touchdown. So this one's still very much up in the air. Now after the made field goal, Walsh back out to kick it away. On the return, this is Micah Hyde. And he'll take it up past the 25 to the 26-yard line. And now the Packers get set to go. The field goal would push it to sudden death. We just saw the field goal on the other end, but I don't think they are thinking field goal. At least not to start this drive, they're not thinking field goal. Not at all, because your point is well taken. Yeah, kick the field goal, you push it to sudden death, but you're also kicking off and giving the other team the ball with a chance to kick a field goal and beat you. Get the touchdown finish the game off that has to be the mindset first throw of overtime for Rodgers wide open receiver complete 15 yards through the air on a first down offense comes to the line now first and ten they come up in an empty set. Four wide receivers, one tight end. Here's Rodgers to throw. He's got time in the pocket. The left side throw complete to Adams. And he's brought down. 11 yards on the pickup, and the Packers are going to have a first down. I know many people like to throw to the tight end, maybe in a little flexed out position because he creates mismatches with his size. But slot receivers do the same thing with their quickness, their speed, and their route running savvy. this inside the 35-yard line. 15 yards there on the catch and run. And when you're playing a quarterback with some experience and some moxie, you enter the danger zone when you decide to blitz him because if he's able to diagnose as he did on that play, he can hurt you downfield. He reads defenses so well, doesn't he? He really does, and the best part about that play for him, I don't think that was his primary target. I don't think so either. I think he had to read, figured out where the blitz was coming from, and went to a secondary target for a really nice game. And they do get him down, but not before he reaches the four-yard line. Now, coaches always harp on the quarterback reading the defense and getting it to the open man. That's good recognition there. And how about what he did after the catch? Yeah, hit your tight end. Let him get some rack. Yeah, when he, when he gets moving, not many guys want to come over and put a hit on him, do they? Rodgers again now. And this will be caught. It's a touchdown. And absolute stun silence here as they have come in and stolen this one in overtime. Yeah. 
So that'll do it for us, for my partner, Charles Davis, and all the hardworking men and women on our crew. I'm Brandon Gordon. You've been watching the NFL right here on EA Sports.